Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about Vesper Theory or the Valent Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. So what is the Valent Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory? Well it says right here that Vesper is a model used in chemistry to help understand the geometry, polarity, bond angles, bond length, and bond energy of different molecules. And it is based on the idea that electrons, which have a negative charge, will repel themselves to the furthest possible distances from one another, thus creating the variety of different shapes that molecules can take. So VESPER, or the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, is a model that will help us to start to visualize and see what some of these molecules uh, are going to look like and, and the shapes that they're going to take. And it's all based on this idea that the electrons that uh, are within an atom or within a molecule are negative and will therefore repel themselves to the furthest possible distances giving us some of the shapes that we can see right here such as linear or bent or trigonal planar or a trigonal pyramid or a tetrahedral trigonal bipyramidal and octahedral and all of these different shapes have different bond angles and bond lengths and bond energies and different polarities and in this video we are going to talk about a couple of these different uh, variables as they relate to Vesper theory so let's jump right in and first start taking a look at the linear molecular geometry so let's first start taking a look at our very first molecular geometry or shape called linear it says right here that the linear molecular geometry describes the geometry around a central atom bonded to two other atoms containing a bond angle of 180 degrees. So let's take a look, for example, at carbon dioxide. With carbon dioxide, we have carbon at the middle bonded to two oxygens. And the bond angles that exist between the carbon and oxygens here is going to be 180 degrees. Okay, and so if we take a look right here, we'll also notice that carbon dioxide has no electron pairs that surround it, thus giving us the shape that we call, or molecular geometry that we call linear. And if we look at this AXE method, where A is the central atom with subscript of one, X representing atoms bonded to A, and E represents lone pairs of electrons surrounding the central atom, we can see that with this molecular geometry right here we don't have any lone electron pairs that surround the central atom and we're gonna have two atoms oftentimes or most of the time which are the same bonded to this uh, this central atom right here and because those electrons here are negative they're gonna wanna push, push themselves to the furthest possible distances and the result is going to be bond angles of 180 degrees between here and here A and X will be 180 degree bond angles and the same thing right here 180 degree bond angles alright so that is our very first molecular geometry shape we have linear let's now take a look at our second molecular geometry shape called bent so let's take a look at bent molecules. If we see right here, it says water is an example of a bent molecule. The bond angle between the central atom and the two atoms attached to it is approximately 104.5. So if we take a look here at the electron arrangement of bent molecules, we can see two different scenarios. We have a scenario here where we have one lone electron pair, and we have a scenario here as in the case with water where we have two electron pairs that are surrounding this central atom right here so we have SO2 and we have H2O both of these will be considered bent and so if we take a look at the bond angle that is the angle that is right here we can see that the bond angle right here is going to be 104.5 degrees and so uh, keep that in mind that with bent molecules we have bond angles of 104.5 degrees and if we take a look at the AXE method here we can see that A is our central atom it's bonded to typically two of the same atoms here 
with either one lone electron pair or two lone electron pairs as in the case with water. If we draw our Lewis structure for water, we can see it's gonna look like this right here. So that is our bent molecular geometry, bond angles of 104.5. They can either have one electron pair or lone pair surrounding it or two lone pairs surrounding the central atom. Let's now take a look at trigonal planar molecular geometry. Trigonal planar is next. It says right here that trigonal planar is a molecular geometry model with one atom at the center and three atoms at the corners of a triangle all in one plane. In, a, in an ideal trigonal planar species, all three atoms attached to the central atom are identical and all bond angles are 120 degrees. So let's suppose we have uh, boron trichloride. We have boron at the center and we have three chlorines here that are all going to be bonded to our central atom boron. We can see here at this molecular geometry or this shape of this molecule right here that all three chlorines and boron are in the same plane. So here we have trigonal planar. We'll also notice that our central atom does not have any lone pairs of electrons that are surrounding it. And so over here we can see once again we have our trigonal planar molecular geometry. And if we're taking a look at the AXE method, we can see right here that this would be boron, this would be chlorine, this would be chlorine, and this would be chlorine here and that this central atom boron has no electron pairs surrounding it. So that is gonna be our trigonal planar molecular geometry. Let's now take a look at trigonal pyramid. In a trigonal pyramid molecular geometry, it says right here that we're gonna have one atom at the apex and three atoms at the corners of a trigonal base. A trigonal pyramid has bond angles of 107 degrees. So if we take a look at ammonia, this would be N. We have three hydrogens attached to it. And because we have this lone pair of electrons right here, we have a lone pair of electrons right here, that is going to force this uh, molecule to take on trigonal pyramid. And so all uh, hydrogens and this lone pair of electrons are no longer going to be in the same plane and it's going to create this pyramid base in the shape or molecular geometry known as trigonal pyramid. And so if we take off our electron pair we can see uh, our lone electron pair that trigonal pyramid is going to look like we we see right here ammonia gas is going to look like this for example and the bond angles that we see right here are all going to be 107 degrees 107 degrees 107 degrees and if we take a look at our axe method we have uh, this is going to be uh, nitrogen we have hydrogen right here and we have our lone pair of electrons right here and all bond angles are going to be 107 degrees. So that is our trigonal pyramid molecular geometry. Let's now take a look at tetrahedral. It says with the tetrahedral molecular geometry a central atom is located at the center with four attached atoms that are located at the corners of a tetrahedron. The bond angles are going to be 109.5 degrees when all four atoms attached to the central atoms or central atom is the same as in methane. So if we take a look at methane right here and we look at its molecular geometry, we have our least electronegative element being carbon. That's going to be at the center. We have hydrogens surrounding it. We have four uh, typically of the same atom surrounding our central atom here and this is going to create bond angles of 109.5 degrees every one of these will be 109.5 degrees 109.5 degrees and 109.5 degrees and if we take a look because our carbon atom here has satisfied its octet 
we don't see any lone pairs of electrons that are surrounding it and so our molecular geometry here is going to be tetrahedral and if we're taking a look at our AXE method uh, here's what it's going to look like well carbon at the center these will be our hydrogens these will be our hydrogens and the bond angles here are going to be, all end up being 109.5 degrees so this is going to be tetrahedral molecular geometry let's now take a look at trigonal bipyramidal a trigonal bipyramid formation is a molecular geometry with one atom at the center and five more atoms at the corners of a triangular dipyramid. This is one geometry for which the bond angles surrounding the central atom are not identical and bond angles include 90 degrees, 120 degrees, and 180 degrees. So let's take a look at an example of uh, phosphorus pentachloride. We have phosphorus at the center. That's going to be our central atom. And we have five chlorines, five chlorines that are surrounding it. And yes, there are instances where atoms don't obey the octet rule, and this is going to be one of them. So the result, if we take a look, are going to be bond angles that vary. We have a bond angle between uh, these two right here that is going to be 90 degrees. But if we take a look at the bond angle between the chlorine here and the chlorine here, if we were to compare these, this would be 120 degrees. And if we take a look at the bond angles between phosphorus and chlorine here, this will be 180 degrees. Whoops, not 120 degrees Celsius, but 120 degrees. All right, so understand how that works. Typically, in a trigonal bipyramidal molecular geometry, we have one central atom surrounded by five other atoms that are typically identical. And so we're not going to have any lone electron pairs surrounding this. And so once again, here we have our molecular geometry, trigonal bipyramidal. And if we're taking a look at the AXE method, we will have phosphorus at the center. And each one of these will be a chlorine. And the result is differing uh, bond angles. Once again, here to here will end up being 180 right here we have a 90 degree bond angle and if we take a look further at the bond angle between here and here this will end up being 120 degrees so there you go that's going to be trigonal bipyramidal let's take a look at one last one octahedral and see what that's all about says octahedral molecular geometry describes the shape of compounds with six atoms or groups of atoms symmetrically arranged around a central atom defining the vertices of an octahedron the octahedron has eight faces hence the prefix octa and has 90 degree bind bond angles so if we take a look at sulfur hexafluoride for example we have one central atom in this case it's sulfur and this too is not going to obey the octet rule we're going to have six fluorines surrounding it and the result is going to be an octahedral molecular geometry where all of the bond angles here are going to be 90 degrees. We have 90 degree bond angles here. We have 90 degree bond angles here. Everywhere there are going to be 90 degree bond angles. And so we'll also notice that with an octahedral molecular geometry, we don't have any lone pairs of electrons that are surrounding our central atom, in this case, sulfur. And if we're taking a look at the AXE method, here is our sulfur right here. And then we have six fluorine surrounding it. And because we don't have any lone electron pairs that are going to be surrounding the sulfur right here, every single bond angle is going to be 90 degrees. So that is valent shell electron pair repulsion theory in a nutshell. And these are some of the more common molecular geometries. However, there are many, 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 many more that you will learn about in a, a later chemistry course, perhaps organic chemistry course. But if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.